Hello, nice to meet you again. Today we have the first lecture. This lecture will be entitled as Lecture Zero. Why? It contains the information about the course book of the digital signal processing. At the beginning, we are going to talk about the course overview, then course outcome, important references, aim of the topics, and then the syllabus will be displayed. Well, now let us show you the slides okay now at the beginning we have general definition for the signal processing or its main concerns it concerned with the representation transformation and manipulation of signals and the information they contain of course to have a signal or to consider a function as a signal it must contains important information well now let's go to the first word what do we mean by representation now generally signals may be represented either in time domain or in frequency domain for example when we talk about say time domain signals or analog signals say well, for example, we have a signal X of T, okay, signal X of T equals to, for example, 3T, okay. This is a simple signal, okay, linear signal in continuous time domain, okay, so this is a function. Now, this signal, I mean X of T, is represented where in time domain by what by expressing x of t equals to 3t well so this is the what this is the signal representation in time domain of course here we are talking about what about the analog signals on the other hand we may represent uh, the signal in a frequency domain okay we may represent the signal in a frequency domain for example what like what like like uh, for example taking the fourier series or fourier transform for the signal and draw the spectrum of the signal well by now we, ha we have two kinds of representations okay either the signal will be represented in time domain or the signal will be represented where in a frequency domain second important term in the signal processing will be what will be the transformation of course as i think you have studied the uh, fourier series and fourier transform in the previous year well so uh, an example for the transformation will be the Fourier transform of course Fourier transform will convert the signal or trans or, or tr transform the signal from the time domain into what into the frequency domain of course in the frequency domain we may what we may uh, see the frequency components of a given signal well now transformation again for example, we have another kind of transformation is called Laplace transformation. Laplace transformation will be used for what? For complex domain. As we know, in the Laplace transformation, we have real and we have real axis. So, Laplace transformation is considered as a complex plane. Well, so we are going to transfer this transform the signal from the time domain into what into a complex domain or laplace transformation the same thing we have where in the digital signals basically we have discrete fourier transformation for the discrete time signals and we have another transform which is used to transform the time domain signal into complex plane which is called the, the z transformation 
So by now we have explained what do you mean by representation and what do you mean by the transformation. Third important word will be the manipulation of signals and the information they contain. Of course, manipulation means either filtering the signal, okay, we may pass the signal through low pass filter, band pass filter, high pass filter, band reject filter, or we may pass the signal through attenuator, amplifier, and so on, okay? All of these are examples for what? For the manipulation of the signals. Of course, using filters, using amplifiers, using attenuators will help us for what? To extract, okay, or reback the important information from the signal. Now, examples for the DSP remove the noise in speech to make it clear okay as you know we may have a speech signal of course you know what do you mean by speech okay the speech signal may be contaminated with a noise so we may use what we may use some kinds of filters to enhance and remove the noise uh, with the speech signal the aim will be what making the speech signal more clear or to enhance and image to make it more beautiful of course nowadays we have a lot of filter banks which will be used which are used with what with the images to make it more clear and more beautiful signal processing is one of the fundamental theories and techniques to construct modern information systems of course nowadays in everywhere we have what we have DSP tools or DSP techniques or functions in the for example satellite receivers you need DSP in the mobile systems in mobile port uh, in your mobile phones okay in everywhere everywhere you need what you need DSP in medical instrumentations again you need DSP techniques and so on so everywhere we need what we need the DSP techniques well let's go to the what to the course outcome now at the end of this course what will be the outcome okay so the student will gain what at, at the end of this course first thing the student determine will be able to determine the spectrum of the signal using the DFT and FFT of course at the beginning we said that this course is dedicated for what for the digital signals so we are going to find the means tools by which we cannot we can convert the digital signals into a frequency domain for what to determine the frequency components of these signals so the tool or the algorithm available to do so will be what will be the DFT discrete Fourier transformation of course to speed up the discrete Fourier transformation we are going to use what we are going to use the fast Fourier transformation second point after the talking about the determination of the spectrum again you know an important point what do you mean by spectrum uh, spectrum will be divided into two kinds basically first one will be the magnitude spectrum as you have studied in the previous year of course the y-axis will be the magnitude of the transfer function or of the signal and the x-axis will be the frequency either in hertz or in radian per second so two kinds of uh, say spectrum we have okay now this will be the x-axis and this will be the y-axis of course here will be the magnitude oh, sorry this will be the magnitude and we have this is the magnitude for example say magnitude of edge of f and here we have what 
the f axis in hertz well so we are talking about magnitude and the frequency of the signal of course the other kind of the uh, spectrum will be will be the phase spectrum okay at that time we are going to determine the phase of the function i mean the transfer function or even the signal this will be the phase and this will be the magnitude of course with the frequency so we have two kinds of spectrum okay the magnitude and phase spectrum second point the student will be able to design analyze and implement the digital filters of course main objective of this course to design digital filters basically we have two kinds of digital filters FIR stands for finite impulse response and IIR stands for infinite impulse response of course what's the difference between design and analyze and implement the digital filter design of course we have techniques algorithms by which we are going to what we are going to design the required filters say for example for the FIR filter design basically we have three techniques or three methods to design the FIR filter which are the window method the frequency sampling method and the optimal method okay these three techniques will lead to what will lead to the design so when we talk about the design we have some algorithms some steps we have to follow to what to design the required filter on the other hand for the IIR filter we have another techniques for example say pole zero placement method impulse invariant method bilinear Z transformation okay these techniques again can be used for what design IIR filter so by now we have defined or we have explained stated what do you mean by the design now after designing the filter we are going to get what to get the transfer function of the filter of course in this case will be h of z why we are talking about digital system so digital filter after the designing we can get what we get we get the the transfer function edge of z now the question is is this edge of z will obey the requirements of the required filter well to answer this question by yes or no we have to analyze the designed filter of course how we are going to determine for example the magnitude spectrum of the filter phase spectrum of the filter impulse response of the filter and the step response of the filter so we have some criteria we have to follow to determine whether the designed filter will obey the requirement or not well so analysis will be what will be done after what after the design step so we are going to analyze the performance of the filter i mean when we talk about analyze means what means analyzing the performance of the designed filter so using analysis techniques i mean either the discrete Fourier transform or fast Fourier transform to determine what the frequency response of the system so at that at the end of the analysis stage we can guarantee that the designed filter will obey the requirement of the system now third word implement the digital filter implementation means what realizing the filter well so we are going to, at the beginning we are going to realize the filter what do you mean by realization i mean the transfer function will be converted into what into for example multiplication addition uh, feedback and so on well this this step is called realization 
after realization, we are going to implement the design and analyze filter by using what? By using a hardware. This hardware may be a DSP board, okay, or maybe a PC, or maybe say, for example, a microcontroller. Well, for example, you may use the microcontroller for what? To implement a filter, or you may implement your filter using a MATLAB software, LabVIEW software, C language, and so on, okay? Either using software programs to implement uh, the designed filter, or we may use the hardwares, of course. Of course, the hardwares, again, will be driven by a special software to implement the digital filter. So this will be, uh, I'm talking about the point number two. Point number three, implement filters on a digital signal processor. Okay, now, in the point number two, we talked about what either software, we said, or DSP kit, or microcontroller. Now, what's the difference between digital signal processor and general purpose microprocessor? As I think you have studied, say, the 8086 or 386, or even the Pentium microprocessor. So, these kinds of microprocessors are called what? Are called general purpose microprocessor. Why? General purpose microprocessor, as you know, the operations done or implemented by the micro general microprocessor will be what? Say we have a transfer instruction, for example, move and so on. Well, we have multiplication, addition, subtraction, I mean mathematical operations. Again, we have what? We have logical instructions well so it contains what general instructions while on the other hand the dsp processor have special dsp instructions for example transformation okay we have for example built-in fft we have easily for example convolution correlation okay and so on so a specific functions or instructions will be what will be performed using the dsp general purpose i mean uh, dsp processor while the general purpose microprocessor will be used for what to implement general instructions like logical transfer instructions or arithmetic instructions point number four the student will be able to determine the frequency response of the FIR and IIR filter. Of course, we said that we have to have the necessary tools to analyze the designed filters. Maybe it will be FIR or IIR filter. Now, course reading list and references. By now, we are going to talk about the important references required for this course. First reference will be the digital signal processing by John G. Prox. Of course, in reference number one, we can cover uh, the basic topics. I mean, um, the sampling, introduction to the digital signal processing, convolution, and the Z, Z transformation. Of course, all of these topics can be covered with the reference number one. Of course, we have a huge number of DSP references which can be used. Reference number two, Shum outlines of theory and problems of digital signal processing by Monson Edge Hayes. I have selected reference number two, really why? Because it contains a huge number of solved problems. So reference number two can be used as what? As a tutorial. Well, reference number three will be the digital signal processing, a practical approach by Emmanuel C. I. Figor. Reference number three, I'm going to depend 
basically on reference number three when we are going to design what when we are going to design FIR and IIR filters basically we have two chapters in the three reference number three uh, which are chapter number six and chapter number seven in chapter number six we are going to talk about the FIR filter design and in chapter number seven we are going to talk about the techniques and algorithms available to design IIR filter so these are about what about the references which will support uh, this course okay now the aim of this topic to produce graduates who understand how to analyze okay and manipulate digital signals well so our basic aims okay or the course will deals with what will deals with digital signals no more well so you have to be able to analyze and manipulate digital signals and have the fundamental programming knowledge to do so now what do you mean by the programming knowledge through this course really we are going to use uh, matlab and lab view to implement or to do some lab sessions well so you have to be familiar with matlab instructions and the uh, lab view really lab view i'm going to use the soft software lab view to design what to design fir and iir filter at the end of the course so at the beginning we are going to give you a set of introduction experiments well for what to be able to design uh, suitable kinds of filters at the end of the course okay so you have to have what you have to have fundamental programming knowledge so to be able to design something in DSP you need two things you need the theories of the DSP system and you need a software program to implement uh, your algorithms well so you have to be familiar with the DSP principles a plus what plus programming or a software program well by now we have the syllabus of next item in this lecture will be the topics of course the topics or the syllabus of the course at the beginning we have an introduction to the signals and system and representation of signals in time domain as i have told you before in the signal processing the first thing will be what representation of signals so at the beginning we are going to represent the signal in time domain second item in the topic will be linear time invariant systems as i think you have studied in the previous year the linear time invariant system but really what do you mean by time invariant system it means the coefficients of the filter or of the system will remain unchanged with time okay now is there an example for time varying system yes time varying system for example adaptive filters the coefficients of the adaptive filters is varied with what with time well so this is the example for what time invariant and time varying system of course, FIR and IR filter are what? Are time invariant systems. Why? We are going to design the FIR and IR filter with fixed coefficients. So these coefficients will not be changed with time. On the other hand, when we talk about the adaptive filters, at that time, the filter coefficients will be what? Will be varied with time. So adaptive filters are called what? Are called time varying systems. Next thing we are going to determine what 
the impulse response as you know the impulse response either it will be edge of t or the continuous time system or it will called what it will called the edge of n for the discrete time systems now the question is why we are always talking about impulse response <clears throat> say not sine response or cosine response of course what do you mean by impulse response let me show you an important thing uh, say this is a system okay and this system has input and an output okay input will be x okay output will be y and impulse response for the system is what is h of course how we are going to determine y of course we are going to apply x to the input and using the convolution uh, formula x convolve with edge we are going to determine what to determine the output y so convolution will be used for what to determine the output of a given system now my question is what why we are talking about impulse response not other kinds of responses i mean x will be delta okay in this example when we talk about impulse response the input will be delta function either delta of t or delta of n well for discrete time systems it will be delta of n for continuous time system it will be delta of t my question is why we have select delta not other functions i mean maybe t function sine cosine okay exponential function why we have selected delta not other functions now if we are going to refresh our information of the Fourier transformation at that time the Fourier transformation for delta of t okay Fourier transform it will be what one okay it will be one so what does it mean of course using the Fourier transformation Fourier transformation for delta of t is equal to 1 now what does it mean what does it mean delta of t Fourier transform for delta of t means equal to 1 if we are going to draw the magnitude spectrum for the Fourier transform of the delta of t it will be as follows look this is the y-axis and this will be the x-axis I'm going to change the color well now this will be the spectrum of the delta function it starts from minus infinity and ends with infinity of course uh, this represents what this represents the sorry pen I need a pen f axis okay this x axis represents f axis and this way this one will be the y axis now what we can conclude we can conclude that delta function okay delta function the Fourier transform for delta function contains what contains the whole spectrum now how it contains the whole spectrum the magnitude spectrum for the delta function will start from minus infinity and ends at infinity with what with the same magnitude equal to one so when we are going to select delta function and apply delta function to the input of the system just as what just as applying the whole spectrum to the what to the input of the system and measuring the output so the impulse response will give us the exact response of a given system that's it okay so in this way we have explained why we are going to determine the impulse response convolution and and the deconvolution 
Of course, what do you mean by the deconvolution? Rapidly, I'm going to talk about it. Why we are going to study these terms in detail in the next coming lectures, inshallah. Uh, deconvolution, for example, uh, as we have talked about before a moment, we said that for the uh, for the any system, say we have this system, okay, input and output. Sometimes we have the following cases. I mean, x is known. I mean the input, and output is known while the the impulse response is unknown so we are going to to supply or feed the input by x and measure what the output of the system i mean the output <coughs> what about edge of n of course at that time we are going to use the process called what called deconvolution Deconvolution, if you have information about input and output, at that time you can what you can determine the impulse response of the system. This process is called what is called the deconvolution, or in uh, some cases is called uh, system identification. Now, item three in the syllabus will be linear constant coefficient difference equation, Fourier transform, and for frequency response as I think you have studied the differential equations and you are familiar with the differential equation now the first thing in this lecture um, uh, in this topic I mean really in this item uh, why we are going to use the differential equations of course differential equations are used for what are used to convert okay or to represent physical phenomena well converting the physical phenomena into mathematical equations well so this process is called what is called modeling i mean for example we have we have uh, we are going to study the say uh, temperature changes okay or uh, say for example we are going to monitor the traffic uh, all of these are what are real functions or real phenomena, physical phenomena. Well, so physical phenomena would be converted into what? Into equations. So how we are going to convert it into equation? Of course, using modeling. The output of the modeling will be what? Will be the differential equations. This is what in the continuous time systems. Well, now to model and represent discrete time systems or digital systems using equations it will lead to what will lead to difference equations so to describe digital systems i mean digital discrete time systems i mean we need what we need difference equations well so we have a lecture dedicated lecture for about what about the difference equation uh, and how we are going to find out the solution of difference equation of course when you talk about the solution of difference equation means what means finding out the output of the system well and if you remember when you talk about the differential differential equations we have two kinds of solution homogeneous solution and particular solution so total solution y will be y edge plus y p well y edge when the input is equal to zero well and yp when we are going to what we are going to consider the input to the system now point four frequency response of a linear time invariant system of course we are going to use the uh, dft and fft to determine the uh, frequency response of the linear time system and uh, point number five we are going to uh, use the Z transformation to convert the discrete uh, time signal into its equivalent complex domain. Uh, a step, another thing, of course, as you know, whenever we are going to study a, a transformation, say here Z transformation, of course, we have to study the inverse and how we are going to find out the inverse Z transformation. Uh, 
would be we have properties and some techniques to find out the inverse transformation will be studied through uh, this course point seven structures of the digital filter we said that after designing the filter or when you are going to design a filter uh, it will lead to what it will lead to uh, and uh, say transfer function to a transfer function this transfer function must be realized i mean converted into structures either say uh, direct realization uh, for example we have cascaded realization and parallel structures of course these structures will be studied through uh, this course Eight, digital filter design. In general, we are going to talk about the general consideration of the filter design, and we may are going to make a comparison between a fire filter and air filter, and which which one is the suitable for different cases. Uh, nine, digital filter design FIR, and digital filter design IIR. Uh, point eleven, discrete Fourier transformation DFT. Signal analysis and synthesis based on DFT. Of course, we may generate signals based on the frequency components. At that time, composing the signal or generating a signal from its basic uh, frequency components, this process is called synthesis of the signal. Uh, point 13, uh, we are going to what? speed up uh, the DFT process by using what the fast Fourier transform. And finally, uh, point 14, uh, we are going to talk about uh, some applications of the DSP, say, for example, the adaptive filters, inshallah. Uh, this is all about the uh, lecture number one. So, uh, see you in the lecture number two. Uh, goodbye.